So now that we're guiding ourselves in the backend and throwing errors if that nickname is already taken, wouldn't it be neat if we were able to see that error in the front end? Because right now it's really hard to see the error. I can just press send and I don't see anything happening. So let's try and go to the backend and see how we actually can fix that. First of all, let's talk about how we sent the error right now to the front end and how we can catch it in the front end. And let's just start with a simple example right here. First of all, we kind of wrap ourselves in the nickname right here in the try catch. We did that in the last lesson where we created this. When we add the client, we kind of throw an error if something is horribly wrong and we say nickname is already used. That's going to be caught right here if that's the case, like in our case right now where I tried to send John again and that's actually already taken. So because of that, we hit this client error right here. But what is that actually? Well, in all honesty, it's actually a wrapper to help you write the following. So I could do the same thing manually right here by saying error like this, comma, and then passing over uh, the error itself. And by the way, that should be single quotation, of course, you know that. Um, <clears throat> so that's actually the same thing that we're doing right here in these two lines right here. Now, I might want to use this one instead, because maybe I want it to be more precise that this is actually in the chat area. So I'll call a chat error, maybe, uh, where this is just a general error message event that you're sending. And again, you're sending it with this error right here, but it's pretty much just an emit to the client from the backend that something went wrong. One more thing I want to do is instead of sending the entire error, I actually right now just want to send the message from that error, not the entire error. So let's go back right here to the service and just show you what an error actually is. If I go into the error right here, just control or command click, and then I can actually see an error has a name, a message and a stack. Now right now I only want to focus on the message because that's the message I'm actually sending right here, nickname already used. So that's what I'm going to pass back to the front end. So only thing we need now is to catch this in the front end and start listening for errors in the front end. Inside the front end, of course, I'm going to start in the service and I want to start listening for a new area right here, which is going to be listen for errors. Now, this one could be put globally. Uh, if you want to, it could be put globally inside the app module or something like that. So it would maybe be inside the app component and then globally it would send that error just maybe with a toast or something. We can do that later if, if that's something you want. <clears throat> Let's just put it in here in the chat area for now. I'm passing back a string. I know that because the message is going to be a string. And there we go. That should be all we need to kind of get this listening for error up and running. So let's start using that new listen for errors right here. We're going to use that in the component. And in here, what I'm going to do is just like what we did with the clients, we're going to say error dollar sign right here to say this is going to be an actual um, listener and observable that we're going to use in the HTML. And we'll say chat service, listen for errors. So now we start listening for these errors. Now we need this property locally, alt enter. There we go. Now we have the property available and we'll just get rid of this guy. There we go. Now we have the error available. And again, we have the same problem that Lint is telling me, maybe you should be very specific that this is undefined. So let's just do that. The final thing I'll do is I'll go into the HTML and just start printing this error if there's actually an error available. Now I'm going to just put it all the way in the top right now. Again, don't worry, we will start looking into some styling soon with some bootstrap to kind of make this prettier in different ways. First, I'll do an NGF and I'll say if there actually is an error. So I'll say, I want to start listening and that's the async pipe, right? That's like doing the subscribe and unsubscribe. And I want to say that if there is actually an error at some point, I want to store that inside the error property right here. So this as right here, we talked about it earlier, but it pretty much just take the, the thing that comes out of the subscribe and puts it into this field right here. So it's just easier an easier way to kind of put that into our code right here. There we go. And then we present that error. So notice again, this error right here maps to this guy right here. And this error is the actual observable inside the TypeScript code right here. So that's how they are bound together, right? Now we could also do it. We could also make it like give it a style for now and just give it a color of red just to do something. There we go. Let's try and see this. If it actually runs now, we'll get an error. Going back to the code and let's just try and put in a nickname of John. Since the backend has restarted, John is gone. So we need to just go to the other client we have right here and also put in John there. And now it should actually give me an error. Nickname or reuse. That's a lot more specific than before where we just could keep clicking and nothing really happened. We are very, very happy now. Sweet. So that's it for this lesson. Now we can send an error at least. And again, don't worry, we will prettify everything later um, as we move forward.
So we'll make this look as shiny later on. That's it for this lesson. See you next time.